Hallelujah. Amen. Welcome out this evening uh, to our uh, Sunday night worship service here at the Door Christian Church. We're going to lift our voices together. We're going to glorify God. We're going to praise Him. And we're going to exalt His name. Let's sing this song, Cross of Calvary, as we worship Christ together. Hallelujah, Jesus. And oh, the cross of Calvary. Jesus, God's Son, died upon that tree. To save us from hell's misery, he overcame death and has no sting. And oh, the cross of Calvary was no mistake, it was meant to be. The blood of the Lamb has set us free, we have a home for eternity. So shout victory, so shout victory. By his blood we have been set free. Death and hell have no hold on. Shout victory. So shout victory. So shout victory. By his blood we have been set free. Death and hell have no hold on. Let's sing it again. Oh, the cross. Oh, the cross of Calvary. Jesus, God's son, died upon that tree. Save us from hell's misery. He overcame death and has no sting. And oh, the cross of Calvary was no mistake, it was meant to be. The blood of the Lamb has set us free. We have a home for eternity. So shout victory. So shout victory. By his blood we have been set free. Death and hell have no hold on. Shout victory. So shout victory. So shout victory. By his blood we have been set free. Death and hell have been sing it one more time. Oh, the cross. And oh, the cross of Calvary. Jesus, God's son, died upon that tree. Save us from hell's misery. He overcame death and has no sting. And oh, the cross of Calvary was no mistake. It was meant to be. The blood of the Lamb has set us free. We have a home for eternity. So shout victory. So shout victory. By his blood we have been set free. Death and hell have shout victory. So shout victory. So shout victory. By his blood we have been set free. Death and hell have no hold on me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Why don't we all stand together as we continue to worship God. We're going to sing this song every day. Lord, it's you who I live for. Let's glorify his name. Exalt him. Hallelujah. What to say, Lord, it's you who gave me life and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now that you saved me. Lord, give all that I am to you that every day I can be a light that shines your name. Sing every day, Lord. Every day, Lord, I learn to stand upon your word and I pray that I, I might come to know you more that you guide me. Every single step I take that every day I can be a light unto the world. Every day it's you I live for. Every day I'll follow after you. Every day I'll walk with you, my Lord. Every day, Lord, every day, it's you who I live for. Every day, I'll follow after you. Every day, I'll walk with you, my Lord. Let's sing it from the top. What to say? What to say, Lord? It's you who gave me life, and I can't explain just how much you mean to me now. Save me, Lord, give all that I am to you that every day I can realize your name. Every day, Lord, every day, Lord, I learn to 
stand upon your word and I pray that I I might come to know you more that you guide it. every single step I take that every day I can be a light unto the world every day it's you I live for every day I'll follow after you every day I'll walk with you my Lord every day Lord every day it's you I live for every day I'll follow after you every day I'll walk with you my Lord let's see it again every day Lord every day it's you I live for every day I'll follow after you every day I'll walk with you my Lord yeah every day I do I live for every day I'll follow after you every day I'll walk with you my Lord hallelujah let's give God praise together Jesus we worship you my King we exalt your name, my God in heaven. We worship you, my Jesus. We praise you, my God. Hallelujah. We're going to slow it down this evening and worship together. Let's lift our voices, our hearts, our hands as we glorify God. Amen. Want to be clean. That's my desire tonight. Amen. I hope that's yours as well. God, you cleanse me. You have your way in my life. Let's worship him and let's praise him this evening. Hallelujah. Yes, my King. Here we go. Your feet, Lord, I bow. Search me, O God.
Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail pierced hands. Washed me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know, your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb.
Let's tell the Lord Jesus we love him this evening. Jesus, you are worthy of all glory and honor and praise, my God. Hallelujah, Lord. Amen. How many are glad tonight to be in the house of the Lord? We're very grateful to have you with us in our Wednesday night midweek service. We're also glad, amen, to have the folks that are on live stream tonight, amen. Also, we are excited, amen, to worship together. We want to uh, go before God in prayer this uh, evening. Uh, we're going to continue to pray for our world, praying for our nation. Um, I uh, didn't get to see or hear anything, but um, my mom sent a text saying that there's some crazy things happening at the Capitol. And so uh, we need to pray for America. Amen. And all the craziness that is happening there. Amen. At the Capitol in Washington. We want to pray um, also for um, um, healing for uh, Pastor John Sasueta. Believing God for healing in his body. Our sister McKenna Carter. Uh, Pastor uh, um, Lorenzo Martine Martinez. We've been praying for him. He was uh, in the hospital with COVID. Um, he was, um, you know, they were monitoring him because he was a diabetic. He had a heart attack. They had to fly him, do some uh, surgery in, on his heart, gave him, I think, two stints in his heart. Um, while he was in the hospital, he suffered a stroke and um, needed a miracle. We got a text, I believe it was yesterday, um, that the doctors had him up and walking. And so God is a miracle worker. Um, one of the latest um, updates was that um, they had a... Um, incubate him I think is what it is no uh, because he wasn't swallowing and they didn't want him to get pneumonia and so I'm not sure exactly what it's called that they had to do for him so he still uh, needs miracles but God is a healer we're believing God um, for him I continue to pray for myself I know you guys are praying for me Sunday evening I had a little bit of a scare um, thought I was uh, suffering a heart attack or about to went to the doctor um, and uh, they said my heart was functioning normal all the tests that they did was good um, they did say that I'm not uh, a good eater my cholesterol levels were very 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 high and so um, we're gonna pray for complete miracles there I got to do my part and discipline myself when it comes to eating healthy and right but I thank everybody for praying for me and I know that God's our healer and we're gonna continue to pray for me and for others who are not well feeling sick let's pray for all of our our outreach pastors, the De Leons, the Montoyas, the Hollins, praying for the Harmons, the Angriga, uh, Belize. We have a Bible conference this coming up um, uh, Monday, Monday through Friday in Prescott, Arizona. And we're going to believe God for a, a tremendous time. Um, those that are in attendance, pray for this conference, that God moves and God helps those that are there. Traveling Grace, amen. I mentioned the other day that uh, uh, all of our pastors out of Alamosa are, are, on the, are traveling to this conference. And so that's a big treat and a joy to see what God's going to do in all of the families that are going, amen, from uh, all our outreach pastors. So we're going to believe God. Pray for our fellowship of churches all around the world, all of our pastors, all of our evangelists, all of our missionaries. Pray for our leadership, and we're going to believe God, amen, for our service tonight. How many have a need uh, this evening? Uh, you can, uh, as always, signify with an uplifted hand. Uh, we want to pray for each and every one of you. We want you to pray for each other. And we're going to cry out to the Lord. If you're on our live stream, amen, you lifted your hand. I could not see, but it don't matter because God does. Amen. And uh, he is the one that we're, we're uh, signaling. God, I am trusting you. So let's cry out to God together. You join us uh, where you're at on our live stream. And let's believe God to help us and to speak to us and to have his way. Father, we're very grateful, my King, for the <clears throat> love of God and the grace of Christ Jesus, Lord. Um, uh, your faithfulness, my King, we bring before you, my God, tonight, Lord. Um, uh, just needs, Father God, uh, Lord, burdens, Father God, Lord, a uh, uh, heartbreak, Father. We ask you to move by your power and your Holy Spirit, God. Bring a revival to America, God, a healing to this nation, Father God. Lord, we pray, Father God, that this time, Father God, uh, of this pandemic would turn many hearts to trust in Christ as Lord and Savior, 
Father. Move upon all these who are sick tonight, Father God. We trust in the precious and powerful blood of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Father God, we bring, Father God, all of our labor, God, to you, my God. Anoint what we do for God, Lord. Let us see fruit, Father God, for our labors in 2021, my King. Father God, we pray, Father God, for revival, and we give you our service tonight, Lord. We ask you to move by your power and by your Holy Spirit this evening. We give you all the glory and honor and praise tonight in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's um, turn and wave it to somebody this evening. Uh, we can take our seats. Amen. Uh, again, God bless you. Very glad and grateful to have you with us tonight in our Wednesday night midweek service here at our church, the Door Christian Church in Alamosa. Amen. Where Jesus Christ is changing lives. We are right, very glad to have you here tonight. Uh, we want to receive this evening's offering. Uh, tonight we're going to honor the Lord um, with our giving. And uh, we're believing God for good things in 2021. Amen. We're trusting God to help us. We're trusting God, amen, to provide and to meet all the needs in the work that we're involved in, the work of his gospel. Uh, we are uh, passing the offering plate again, and so we're very excited for that as we're trying to move forward back, amen, to a, a normal church service. I, I know that they've lowered um, uh, some of the stages here in Alamosa. You see the parking lots of restaurants uh, filled again. People are going out eating, amen. We're going to believe God, uh, amen, with faith that this is going to be a year of healing, a year of recovery, a year of uh, a revival, amen, and God's going to bless his church. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's let's ask the ushers to come forward this evening, and we're going to ask if uh, Jonathan Tona would lift his voice and ask the Lord's blessings over the gift and the giver tonight. Hallelujah. Let's sing together. There's a king who reigns over all of my tomorrow. There's a king who reigns over all my yesterday. There's a king who reigns over present circumstances. Yeah. I'm glad that Jesus is the King who reigns. So I choose, so I choose, I choose to trust Him. And I choose, I choose to praise. There's a King who reigns over all of my tomorrows. And there's a King who reigns over all my yesterdays there's a king who reigns over present circumstances and i'm glad that jesus is the king sing i'm so glad and i'm glad oh i'm so glad i'm glad that jesus is the king who reigns Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, our musicians. Amen. And singer, we're very grateful for worship ministry. I love to worship God, church. It's such a joy and something that I enjoy. And um, I'm telling you, I have a guitar at home. I'm always playing the guitar, worshiping Jesus. A lot of my family um, are all musicians, and so we always play together. And we love to worship, and so I am always grateful to have a worship team uh, here in our church that helps lead us, amen, into uh, praise. Uh, just some announcements we do want to remember, as I said, uh, Prescott uh, Bible Conference, uh, January Winter Conference starts Monday, and um, we want everybody just to uh, keep that conference in your prayers, that God does a work for everybody that is going to be attending uh, this week of Bible Conference. Um, just for those of you that are here and are going, I uh, got a uh, one of the emails that said that all of the evening services are beginning an hour earlier so just keep that in mind uh, they asked us to announce that that way people traveling especially on monday um keep that in mind i i don't know if there's curfews in arizona or what it is but every service begins an hour earlier we uh we have new banners on our back wall 
Uh, we, do, we do a theme every year um, for our church. And um, I know this was just a tough, tough um, year um, for a lot of people in our world, in our nation. A lot of us saw people we cared about get sick, our church, a lot of our fellowship with the COVID virus. A lot of us know somebody who didn't make it, who passed. Um, we all have struggled not being able to fellowship and socialize and, and hang out. And there's always, there's been our fair share of ups and downs. And when uh, we, when my wife asked what I had in mind for this year's theme, it was um, Romans chapter 8, verse 37. Um, and uh, the title or the theme was More Than Conquerors. Uh, because I know that we can make it through anything with, with God. Um, every year we do an unveiling at our New Year's Eve celebration we didn't get to. Our banners weren't here by our Sunday morning service. I was hoping they would be here by our very first Sunday, and they didn't. Uh, Pastor Joseph helped me. They came in today. We ran over here to the church or drove over here to the church, and we uh, began to build and uh, put them together. And so I, I hope you enjoy them. And I hope they mean uh, something for every one of us um, this uh, week. Amen. Uh, this year. Romans chapter 8, verses 31 uh, through verse 39. I'm going to read uh, out of uh, the, the text of this scripture for our theme. You can turn there. Eight, Romans 8, 31. And we're going to read through verses 39. Amen. I had read a quote. Not sure if it was in a book or where I seen it, but it said there's nothing in this life that we can ever go through that the love of God cannot see us through. And it just meant so much to me. I, I think this quote, I might have uh, come across it shortly after, you know, um, we had the, the car accident and lost um, our girls and just seeing the hand of heaven healing us and helping us and moving us forward as families that, you know, had to give a daughter to the Lord or, or even as a church who we went through that together. And uh, there is nothing in this life that we can ever go through that the love of God cannot see us through. Romans chapter 8, verse 31, the Apostle Paul, he writes these words, and we're all very familiar with this passage of Scripture, but I believe God's going to kind of restir confidence and faith in His love for every one of us tonight. Paul says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for your sakes we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there any way we can lower that heat just a bit? <clears throat> the heater, can we lower it a little bit? <clears throat> I want to <clears throat> uh, talk about... Uh, God's love tonight and to understand God's love and to know God's love and experience God's love um, we have to have been rescued from God's love you know the Bible tells us in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life he didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him would be saved and so we understand God's love when we've been rescued. Amen. It's, it's kind of hard, amen, not to, to uh, 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 know his love any other way. I, I feel anyways, um, you know, and I, I think about relationship, you know. You have a relationship with your parent, you know. You ask any kid, you know, you know, do you love your mom? And they say, yeah. Why do you love them? 
And their reasons are she bails me out all the time. You know, she cooks me dinner and she feeds me and she buys me clothes. And, and basically, I've been rescued by this lady. I have been left to myself. Uh, you know, do you love your dad? Yes, I love my dad. Why do you love your dad? Because he takes care of me and he protects me and he plays with me and he thinks of me. And so basically what they're saying is because I've been rescued, I've been bailed out uh, um, uh, by them and we're able to, to understand love that way. And so the Bible teaches us in this scripture, amen, God loved us. He wasn't willing that we should perish, that we were in big trouble um, with, with on our own. And uh, he loved us enough that he sacrificed his only son. He bailed us out. He saved us, rescued us. Some of us just in the nick of time. Amen. And so we have this understanding and we're able to grasp his love. Uh, amen. And there's a world full of people who don't know God's love. And in fact, they question God's love. Uh, uh, they don't even uh, uh, fully believe that it's there and it exists. And the reason why is because they haven't uh, made themselves available to be rescued. Uh, maybe. God's love is faithful to rescue us. Sometimes we might not even recognize it. You know, there are people <clears throat> who can go through life and life is good and there's no problems. And they can make it through their day with a smile on their face. Some of those same people can experience difficulty and uh, adversity. Things don't go quite their way or the way they hoped it would have. Things happen they wish they didn't happen or things didn't happen they felt should have happened. And it changes that same person. It changes that same person. When life is good and there's no adversity, we're good and we're happy. But when there's a little bit of adversity in our life, it changes how we act and how we reveal or portray ourselves. And life can take a toll on any one of us. In 1 Thessalonians 5.16, uh, the Apostle Paul he gives us these uh, words of wisdom that oftentimes have uh, been questioned by even believers. He says, rejoice always. How often should we rejoice? But it isn't the case always, is it? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now you think about this scripture because rejoicing always and giving thanks in everything has conditions for a lot of us as human beings. We'll rejoice and we'll give thanks when things are good in our lives. But it's quite difficult to rejoice or to give thanks when our lives have suddenly been faced off with some form or sort of adversity. In Job chapter 2 and verse 10, he writes, shall we, accept good, shall we indeed accept good from God, and shall we not accept adversity? And then it says, in all of this, Job did not sin with his lips. Job has been a man in Scripture that many of us as believers has admired uh, over the course of our Christianity because we know his story. We know how this man and his wife and his kids loved God and honored God and the enemy came in and began to assault his life. He faced his fair share of difficulties, uh, amen, uh, more than I'm sure he would have liked to. And there's a heart of a, 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 you know, a sorrow that we have for him because of that. But when you read his story and you see the faithfulness of his life uh, towards God uh, and the way God restores and heals and blesses him in the latter days of his life amen then we can understand uh, amen his integrity and his testimony shall we accept good from god and not adversity and then in all of this job did not sin with his lips paul says rejoice always and in everything give thanks and what he's telling you and i is sometimes life uh, doesn't always roll for us the way that we would have liked it to and maybe this evening you have spent your day struggling. Maybe today was a difficult day for you. Maybe this week has been uh, somewhat tough. Maybe life has been difficult. It happens. 
It's called life. And it can change a person who wants to love God and wants to be faithful and wants to serve Him with all of their heart. The unexpected sometimes visits us, and that's never fun. That's never fun. I'll always remember the day my mom called all of us together to tell us that she'd been diagnosed with cancer. And it was just probably weeks, if not months, earlier that my stepdad, his mom, had passed away. I believe it was from the same cancer. And it really spooked and scared us. Amen. Unexpected. Events oftentimes visit us. Proverbs chapter 4 gives us some amazing, I believe, uh, counsel that can help every single one of us tonight. Proverbs 4 verse 20. He writes and he says, My son... Give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. For out of it springs the issues of life. I did a men's discipleship many years ago here in our church. I did it in a couple of different places actually. But keep your heart uh, with all diligence was to take meant to to take deep care you know just just extreme care of your heart something that none of us are a lot of us aren't good at i was in the hospital sunday evening to find out that i haven't been taking care of mine i read an article talked about how people will take care of their homes They'll put cages on their windows and they'll put alarms, security systems, cameras. People will take care of their vehicles. They'll park far away in the parking lots at stores so nobody hits their car with their car. They'll put alarms on their vehicles. People will take care of their belongings. They'll insure their tools. They'll insure their toys. We're good at taking care of so many things in life. But oftentimes we fail at taking care of the things that are more important than stuff. And that's what Solomon's saying in this verse of Scripture. Scripture. Keep your heart with all diligence. Take very good care. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. God's word, amen, kept, hidden. God's word being uh, obeyed. and God's word being lived. The Bible teaches us that man is not to live on bread alone, but by, the, by every word of God. And in this verse of scripture, the, uh, uh, Solomon is saying that if you and I will in, give attention to God's words and incline our ears to his sayings uh, and we don't let them depart from our eyes, we keep them in the midst of our hearts. He says they are life. They're life to those who find them and their health to all their flesh. And your job and mine is to protect God's word because we live in a world that will say differ, different. We live in a real world, amen. We are spiritual beings, uh, amen, but we live in physical bodies and we live on a physical earth. Uh, we've heard it said uh, numerous times, uh, amen, this is the only life we know, but it's not the only life there is. And so here we are, spiritual people in a physical vessel, living in a physical world. And there are things that happen in this life that would love to snatch out of our hearts every good thing that God has deposited. And when we, there are struggles and when there is adversity, no doubt, amen, those things began, to, things began to wrestle in our mind and in our hearts. Things that don't happen... <clears throat> Things that did happen we wish wouldn't have, have the ability to affect the best of us. And it isn't always the devil. We tend oftentimes to blame the devil. And oftentimes we question God. Maybe this is a trial from the Lord, but I'm going to tell you tonight, amen, it's not always the devil and it isn't always God. 
Sometimes life is just life. And our job is to take care of the heart. I want to talk about the role that devil does play in oftentimes our struggle to understand, uh, amen, what God is doing in our life. He is the mastermind behind the things that we wrestle with. I uh, know that when I get sick, I begin to kind of think the worst sometimes. I don't know if anybody ever is like that. When I have a pain, I tend to think the worst. and um, I don't know. It's real. It's there. I'm not making this up. My wife has oftentimes just scolded me about that. I, my boss is always reminding me, in fact, on the way home, he called me on the way to church tonight, called to see how my doctor appointment follow-up went today. And I was telling him, and he says, Martin, let me just, right away, my brother, he says, you allow your mind to think the worst, and you go to dark places you shouldn't go. And I really appreciate this man, you know, because he's able to speak into my life and he's somebody that that probably knows you know he we were praying for him years ago he had a heart aneurysm and he says the struggles that he's gone through the pains the ups the downs he says every time he goes for checkups you're good but there's a real devil that will get behind some of our real life adversity and he will manipulate and move things to make it appear a lot worse than it is but that's not his goal his goal is not to make your scenario look worse than it is. His goal is to attempt to separate you from a confidence in God's love. That's what his goal is. It's not to bring havoc into your life. I mean, think about the things that we struggle with. Amen. The real ups and downs, the real life blows uh, that are very real and they're there. And then he gets behind them and he magnifies them, whether it's pain or infirmity or sickness or disease uh, whether it's uh, whatever it is uh, amen uh, 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 battles uh, you know in our mind in our in our homes in our marriages those are just real things that take place and we have to we learn over over life how to sort things out and work things through and god obviously gives us wisdom and helps us but the devil we can't say he made that happen or he made this happen, but if he can get behind what happened and begin to twist it, he'll jump on that opportunity. The devil's an opportunity, an opportunist. Amen? And he's also a strategist, meaning that he's had many, many, many uh, years, uh, 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 thousands of years to figure out how to play you and I. The Bible tells us that the devil was at one time a very beautiful angel in heaven who led a rebellion against God. And in his hatred towards God, he will do everything he can to separate you and I from the love of God. And what better tool to use than some of the real life situations that happen in our life. He will try to get us to look at God as if God is at fault. That's how he'll get us to look at God. Like God is at fault. Like God didn't care. Like God wasn't there. How many have ever wondered where God is when sickness and disease sneaks up on them? A lot of people wonder. Amen. And then they got that good Christian that says, you know, God's good. We're praying for you. And they roll their eyes. They can't see it. How many have wondered where God is when a child uh, was being hurt or abused? Uh, where is God when a mother was getting beat up? Where is God when kids are being raised without a father? People wonder where God has been during this pandemic, um, during their financial struggles, uh, during their family problems. Uh, people have oftentimes wondered uh, where God is. <clears throat> There's the real battle. Amen. Amen. We go through things, and it's so easy for the enemy to get behind what we go through and flip it and make it a lot more difficult than what it really is, than, than, than what it is, and then on top of that, discourage us from a faith and a confidence in God's love. Where is God? I believe God's always there. God's always there. 
can turn up the heat a little. I see people are freezing. I was just cooking up here. <clears throat> he's always there. He's always holding us up. God's love might not always remove us from the difficulty we're in, but God's love will definitely get us through it. I believe that with all of my heart. One of the great scriptures that we have is in 2 Corinthians. Uh, the Apostle Paul in chapter 12 and verse 7 uh, we know his testimony, and he talks about Satan uh, uh, assaulting his life. He says these words in 2 Corinthians 12, 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelation, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times uh, that it might depart from me. How many have prayed uh, uh, something away from your life? How many have prayed for a situation to get better, for a situation to change? He says, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, this was Jesus' response to the Apostle Paul. And it might be, sound discouraging to some people, but listen to me. The Apostle Paul didn't look at Jesus' response as a form of discouragement. He says to, to the Apostle, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. He's saying, Paul, you know, there's this difficulty is real and it's in your life. He says, and in this situation, I'm not going to do a, 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 a removing job. In this situation, I'm going to get you through it. Now, why God chose that route, I do not know. But the Apostle Paul's uh, amen, confidence in God's love is what's amazing. Because the devil, no doubt, would have attempted to use this strategy even against the Apostle Paul. Where is God? Look, you prayed. God didn't answer. God didn't help you. God didn't heal you. Do everything you can to get the Apostle Paul to look at God differently. He prayed three times, and the Bible says God's response to him is, My strength, uh, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, Paul didn't say, Oh, God, that's not fair. That's not right. That ain't cool. What did Paul say? He said in verse 9, Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities. That the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And I love that passage of scripture and I am so grateful to the Apostle Paul. Thank you Paul for being steady like a rock. That no matter what situations in life the devil did try to magnify in an effort and attempt to discourage you and separate you from God's love, thank you for standing solid on your faith because it's a powerful testimony, amen, that if the devil is going to attack the Apostle Paul, the devil is going to strategize and attack against us. And if the Apostle Paul can say, I might not, uh, this thing might not disappear from my path, but God's going to get me through it, then it's a testimony that, you know what, uh, if it's going to stay there, then God's going to get me through it. God's going to see me through it. God's going to help me through it. And I'm going to be the one with the victory. For when I am weak, Paul said, it's then that I'm strong. We've always heard things like, uh, what doesn't kill you makes you. It's especially true when God, when God's love uh, is involved. It's especially true when God's love is involved. If it's true for the Apostle Paul, when I'm weak, it's then that I'm strong. Then this is something that only the love of God can do. Not only for him, but for every single one of us. Why does the devil put his big nose in to some of the obstacles we go through in our lives? It's not to make our life worse. It's not to make us miserable and unhappy. It's to eventually separate us. It's to steer us away from God's unfailing love. So I want to conclude tonight. If there's anything that we need to be convinced about, we have to be convinced about God's love. How many parents here tonight who your kids have put you through the ringer, but you still love them? They have put you through some things that if it was anybody else, you would have walked away. Maybe even got revenge. But it's your kid. 
There's nothing that they can do. You might dislike how they live, what they do, how they hurt you. But the truth is you're going to always love them. Your love for them will never change. The one thing that you and I need to be confident about tonight is God's love. Sometimes it might be all that we have to lean on. You know what I enjoy sometimes when I get around to talking to somebody? Pastor, I wanted to talk to you. Pastor, I tried to get a hold of you. Pastor, I know you were busy or I know you were out of town. And they had an obstacle. They had a hiccup. They had a, a roadblock. They had a volcano, an earthquake. But they're still grounded. They needed their brother. They needed their sister. They needed their pastor. But what kept them afloat? was their confidence in God's love. Now, I'm not saying that everybody else don't play a role in our walk with God and helping us to stay afloat when times are tough. But what I am talking about is when we have a confidence in God's love, amen, sometimes it's the only thing we have to lean on, but it's the only thing we really, really need. I want to just read a couple of stories <clears throat> or share a couple of stories and read a few scriptures with you that <clears throat> really did encourage me. I was thinking about Daniel. Or, or the book of Daniel, it talks about those three young Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the Bible tells us that when all of Babylon was bowing down to the decree of Nebuchadnezzar, uh, they refused to. They said that there's only one God who they bow down to, and, and it's the Hebrew God. And uh, because of that, they were, they were, they were um, uh, executed. The Bible tells us that they were thrown into a, a very hot, burning, fiery furnace. They were persecuted because of their faith. They said these words to the king prior to going in. They said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. And he will deliver us from your hand, O king. They were confident God's going to deliver us. How many know that's faith? The Bible tells us that faith is, 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 is uh, it, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, uh, confidence in the things that we're hoping for. The substance of things that we hope for. Hope is confident expectancy. And so the Bible tells us by faith, they tell Nebuchadnezzar, you know what? We're not going to bow down. You do to us whatever you want to do. Mark this down. My God is going to deliver me. And the very next verse of scripture, it doesn't speak of doubt or unbelief but then it says these words uh, it says but if not it's not saying i have faith that god's going to deliver me but if i don't have enough faith and he doesn't deliver me that's not what it's saying he's saying i have faith that god's going to deliver me but if it, if it's his will to not deliver us let it be known to you o king that we will not serve your gods nor will we worship the gold image that you have set up. You know what that second part is saying? We're confident in God's love. If he don't see us out, he's going to see us through. That's powerful, church. We have to keep that in mind in life. If God, my God is capable of seeing me out. But if he don't see me out, I know that he's going to see me through confident in God's love. We have David as a young boy. We know the story. He's offended by those who mocked his God. He goes to the king and basically tells the king if there's no man that's going to fight against this Philistine Goliath, this giant, he says, put me up against him. I'll fight him. And we know the whole story. Saul tells David, you're just a youth. This man has been a warrior, a, 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 a soldier since his youth. But look at what David says. You ready for David's testimony, church? <clears throat> because listen, we're not the only ones that wake up on the wrong side of the beds. We're not the only ones that break a nail or have a bad hair day. We're not the only ones that struggle with our finances. We're not the only ones that, uh, you know, have a wrestling match with our, with our husbands or wives or, or our children. Listen to what David said. This is his testimony in 1 Samuel 17, 37. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, 
He will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And then Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. David didn't say, Oh, dang. You know what, Saul, you're right. What am I doing trying to fight this, this uh, giant? There's no way. It's impossible. He didn't say that. He says, let me just tell you something. God's love has seen me through a lion. And God's love has seen me through a bear. And God's love is going to see me through this uncircumcised Philistine. Confident in God's love. These were people who were convinced that the love of God can see them through any difficulty they might ever find themselves in. How about our boy Peter? Peter, full of faith. When he walked on water to Jesus and he saw the storm, the Bible tells us, he began to drown. He knew who, he, who to cry out to. He could have very easily cried out to one of the other disciples, Hey, throw me the life, the life jacket or the, the donut. I don't know if it's called a donut, the lifesaver, right? He could have very easily called out to anybody for help, but the Bible tells us he cries out to Jesus. In Matthew 14, 30, but when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. Why did Pastor Martin share these three stories of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? David and the giant and Peter on the water? To remind you and I that God will help us through anything. He's there. He's there to see us out or to see us through. But he's there. The question that we always have to ask ourselves is do we trust in his love no matter what? Because that's the hard thing, church. Solomon in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, he says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. So we live in a real world where people do go through some things. And what they need to know more than anything else is God's faithful love. And tonight, no doubt, there are Christians here who have been through the fire. And maybe like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you've come out without even the smell of smoke on you. Your testimony really is a testimony of God's love. That he can help us no matter what we go through. In Luke 22, verse 31, Jesus tells Peter, he says, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you. That he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brother. He's saying, Peter, I'm going to be honest with you. He goes, the devil's personally asked for you. And there are things that might happen in your life. And he's going to strategically weasel his way into those things. But number one, he goes, I'm going to see you through it. That's what Jesus is saying. I've prayed for you. I'm going to see you through it. Number two, he says, when you've come through it, when you've been more than a conqueror, when you've been victorious, he says, strengthen your brother. Let the testimony of my love in your life, getting you through some of your own fair share of difficulties, be a testimony of encouragement that others can lean on when they're going through the fire. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire with their faith in, 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 uh, in God's love. So strong that all of Babylon learned who God was. I know who your God is. He's a God who sees you out of things, and he's a God who sees you through things. Matthew 5, 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by man. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Our testimony 
is supposed to be breakthrough. Not because of us, but because of God in us. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. More than conquerors isn't because you're just this ball of faith. More than conquerors isn't just because you're diehard, faithful, and, and, and hardcore, you know, walking with God. More than conquerors is because of God's love. More than conquerors is because of God's love. I'm telling you, when I prayed about the theme for this year and just thought about the difficulties of 2020, and people have griped and complained and thrown fits, and it's been tough, right? Can't get a haircut because the barber's closed. Can't sit down and take your wife or your kids out for dinner because restaurants are closed. We've had our fair share of complaints. We haven't been able to fellowship, be around people. We've seen all the craziness of this year. We've seen the rioting. We've seen the burning. We've seen the, all the, 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 the fighting going on between uh, right and left and just everything that's happened. But you know what? Here we've entered into a new year. And it's going to be a good year. And God's going to bless our lives. Amen. And we get to look back and say, I survived. Amen. I'm, I survived more than conquerors. Not because I knew how to just hold on. It's because God's love can get us through anything. I want to close with one verse of scripture and we'll bow our hearts. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17 is an amazing and a great scripture. <clears throat> Paul says, But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, so that the message might be preached fully through me, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. What a testimony Paul has. He says, the Lord stood with me. And if he got me through this, he's going to get me through anything. And the reason why he's going to get me through everything is because I have a mission. And my mission is to tell other people about the love of Jesus Christ that will never disappoint them. I want to ask you to bow your head with me for just a moment tonight, church. I pray that this sermon fit <clears throat> the unveiling of our theme for 2021. More than conquerors, Roman 8, Romans 8, 37. God is a good God. I thank Him every day for His mercy and grace and love that rescued me when I didn't deserve to be rescued. Right. Tonight, God's love is made available to every one of us. If you're in our service tonight, here in our church building, or you're in our service on our live stream, and you're struggling, you have difficulty, your day, your week, your life has been tough. And you've wondered, like many have, where is God? I tell you, God has been there. Maybe we just didn't recognize Him. Oftentimes we see God in hindsight. When it could have been a lot worse, but He didn't let it happen that way. I'm telling you, church, God loves you more than anyone or anything could ever love you. For God so loved you that he gave up his only son, Jesus Christ, and he allowed him to die on a cross, shed his blood, be brutally beaten, nailed to this cross, 
he sacrificed the perfect lamb of God without spot, without blemish on the altar, on the cross so that you can know his forgiveness, his mercy, and his grace. I'm telling you, my friend, God loves you so much. Stop questioning. If God loves me, then how come? If God loves me, then why? And just run into his arms and let him hold you let him help you his love will not disappoint you maybe you're somebody who's looked for love everywhere and you've been disappointed again and again and again and you've become very angry and bitter at things in your life and in the world you know why you're disappointed and angry because nothing and nobody could ever love you the way that God does and you need to stop searching for love it's found in God. It begins right there. While our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed for a moment this evening and you're with us and you're not saved, you're not right with God and you don't know or understand His love, or maybe tonight you're far away backslidden, trying to find your way back, I want to say a simple prayer introducing you to the love of Jesus Christ that will forever change your life. If that's you tonight in our service or on our live stream, you can lift your hand to heaven as a gesture of faith saying, I'm going to trust God. Would you lift your hand and let us pray with you tonight? Anybody at all, all across this place, God sees your hand. God sees your hand. Anybody else on our live stream, maybe you lifted your hand. If you're in our service, I want to ask you to come and find a place at this altar where you can kneel. If you lifted your hand, you come, find a place here to kneel on our live stream. If you lifted your hand, you kneel right there where you're at. And I'm going to lead you through a prayer. We're going to surrender our lives to God and His love. Would you pray this prayer with me? Would you say, Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I know that I'm a sinner, and I ask you to forgive me. I know that you rose from the dead. And today you're alive. Flood my life with your love. Change my heart. Help me to trust you from this moment forward. I know, Lord, that you'll see me through anything because you love me. Thank you for hearing my prayer. In Jesus' precious name, amen. We're going to open up these altars for anybody who would like to come and find a place tonight to kneel and to pray. Maybe we just need to, again, lean on God's love as we were reminded of how faithful He is. We're also, if we're not at this altar praying, we're going to stand at our seat and we're going to worship God in a song of praise and we're going to thank Him for His mercy and grace and His love. Let's worship together. Amazing grace How sweet the sound That saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I see was blind but now I see create right spirit within me create in me a clean heart oh Lord and renew a right spirit in me and cast me 
Father, we love you, my King. Jesus, we worship you, my God. We exalt your wonderful name. We magnify you, my Lord. Jesus, Jesus, we love you. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. There is nothing in this life that we would, can ever go through that the love of God cannot see us through. Amen. We're going to bow our hearts and close our eyes and dismiss in a word of prayer. Um, our t-shirts are in the process of being designed. And so uh, I know we always get t-shirts, uh, shirts that match our, our banner. And we're going to have a great, great time, great year. As our heads are bowed, I'm going to ask this uh, evening if um, my brother John Tona would lift his voice and close us in a word of prayer.